All right. Welcome, guys, to class seven. And for today, the agenda is this. Uh, we are going to talk about HTML and its basic structure. Instantiating WebDriver using Chrome Driver. I think we have done this part yesterday already. Uh, understanding Browser Console. That is basically the dev tools of your browser. We will understand that. And then we will go to discussing HTML tags and attributes and how to inspect, inspect web elements. These two things we will do in details, like discussing HTML tags and attributes, we will do it in details. But for today, we'll keep it short and crisp. And then we will write a basic automation test case. Uh, we will try to create a manual test case first, and then we'll create a automation test case, right? And we will see how we can, we can basically uh, work with it. So uh, that is what for today's agenda, right? So let me put this in the presentation mode and get started. All right, so understanding a basic HTML structure. HTML is basically uh, known as um, hypertext markup language. So this is the language that web developer use to build the UI of the application, okay? Using this particular language, you can build the UI of the you can build a UI structure of the uh, web application, but the actual look and feel that you see in the web page, that doesn't only come from HTML. To bring that, uh, we use CSS, uh, that is called uh, cascading style sheet and JavaScript, okay? We add them additionally to a HTML structure so you can say you can think HTML as um, the building structure if you are comparing it with a building so you can you can think that a building is having uh, a foundation and then it has got pillars uh, and then on top of using I mean within the pillar we create walls right so you can say that pillar and the foundation is basically the HTML the walls, uh, the, the cement, the walls, the painting, uh, the color, those are basically coming as a part of your CSS. Uh, and then uh, along with the CSS, you can say JavaScript is basically your doors and windows are your basically doors and windows. You basically use it to go inside the house and come inside the, come out of the house. So those are basically JavaScript. JavaScript basically help you to give the web page uh, the activity, like you, you want to perform an action, you want to um, get some information out of another, another website uh, and fill that information in your, in your website. So it makes your page active, okay? That is basically JavaScript. CSS basically look and feel comes from the CSS and um, HTML basically gives you a basic foundation of your of your website, okay? So HTML page basically comes in a parent, child, and a sibling relationship. It has a parent, child, and a sibling relationship. So look at this particular example that I'm showing you here. There is a root element. The root element of HTML is HTML. And every time you open up a HTML tag, or any tag in HTML, it has to be closed. So you see HTML, the one that I have mentioned on the top, there is a closing tag by a, with a slash, a forward slash uh, at the very bottom. So that's a closing tag of the HTML uh, tag, which is the root tag for HTML. And then we have a body, and then within the body there is a P, P means paragraph, A means anchor. Anchor means a link, right? This is a very, very basic HTML structure. So if you want, I can actually quickly create a HTML structure in front of you and open it up in the in the browser. Okay, anybody can do that. It's very simple, right? So I'm going to go back to my desktop. Uh, not desktop, actually. I'm going to open up my sublime text, and I'm going to write a HTML component, a HTML page. It's very simple. You can write it right now. HTML, HTML. Okay. Uh, this is your HTML. That's fine. Actually, in the sublime, you can actually say that what exactly you are trying to target with. 
I mean, uh, in Sublime, you can say that this code that you're writing, it is what type of code it is. There is a way to do that. I'm just trying to find out the option. Tools, project, window. Uh, line. Not sure. There, there's a there's a there's a way to do it. Anyway, that's not my concern. That's fine. So I have a HTML. I'm trying to create an HTML page. So I'm going to start with the HTML root, which I just did. Opened and closed it. That's fine. In a HTML page, always there is going to be a head. A head. I'm going to close the head, and then there's going to be a body. Okay, so in the head, basically you keep things like the title of the page. So let's give it a title of the page. Again, title will start with the title, title tag, and you give this is a this is a wisdom QA sample page, right? That's the title of the page. What is the title of the page? I'll just explain that to you in a minute. And then you also have, also will give the CSS link or the JavaScript link. You basically keep your CSS, um, CSS links, meaning the CSS files are additionally created in your, for your application, which you mention it here in the head tag. I'll just put the head tag. I'll, I'll close the head tag, and that means the title will be within the head tag. So title and then CSS and JavaScript information, you basically place it within the head tag. And then you have a body tag. In the body tag, you're going to keep, I'm keeping a simple paragraph. Okay, let's keep a, let's keep a input box, which means a text box. So I will say input, input, and then I'll close the input. Input. And then I'm going to say, uh, just give me a second. And then I'm going to say, uh, anchor tag. Anchor tag. So it's in always twice, tag. is it? So with the input and head and body, whatever it be. It will be twice. Why twice? See, I'm you not... typed in input, input. Uh, head. Yeah, the slash input means you're closing it. It is one single tag. You Every tag that you create, you need to close it. That's the rule of HTML. Oh. Whenever you are opening a tag, you have to close that tag. Oh. Okay, so okay. here you see I created an input tag. I'm going to say uh, a paragraph tag or a span tag. Span. Uh, enter, enter your name. Your name. I'm going to close my span. Every thing that you open, you close it. That's the basic thing, right? Input, enter your name, and then I'm going to have a anchor tag and then in the anchor tag that I have there is something called as attribute there is there's a tag and the tag will also have an attribute I mean it may or may not have an attribute depends okay but mostly you will see that these components will have an attribute okay so this guy here right here is a tag and this guy here that I'm writing now called href is basically a attribute. In the attribute, I'm pointing to a link.
Okay. And I'm going to just close that anchor tag just by mentioning a slash here. There are many ways you can close the tag. Like you can create a complete information. You can give the complete information like this, like a slash input, or you can just close it with a single slash at the very end, which will also mean that you're closing it. Now this HTML file, this is a normal text file that I've created. I'm going to convert this file to a dot HTML file. How can I do that? Very simple. I'll simply say file, save as, and then I'll go to, in the desktop, I'll just say that sample dot HTML. Okay, that's pretty much about it. And then I will say save. Okay, so as soon as I actually did convert it to dot HTML, you see I got some color. So Sublime Text understood that this is a dot HTML file. So it basically made this changes. I mean, from code perspective, there is no difference, but yes, it's a HTML, it says HTML page. It, it recognized it as a HTML file. That's pretty much about it. Now, once I have that HTML page right here, you see I have this HTML page right here. As I have that, I can choose to open this in a browser, open with in a browser, Chrome. As soon as I do that, I have got this. Enter your name and this guy. Okay, there is some mistake I have done, which is I have not given any name to the link. So I'll just give it a name to the link, wisdom QA. And then I will close it, close the anchor, right? Then I will close the anchor. So I, my anchor is closed now. I've given link name called wisdom QA. This is an anchor. I'm going to save this, okay? Now if I go back to my file again, and if I open this up in Google Chrome, or any other browser, I should see a link, Wisdom QA. If I open this, I'm navigated to my page right here, correct? So what did I do? I just created a very simple, a very simple HTML page just from scratch. But you can see, you can look at this and you can see that this is a very basic, structure that I've created. In this, this is a .html file, yes, but there is nothing into it. There is no CSS into it. There is no JavaScript into it. That is why it is looking like uh, a static page, right? Nothing more than that. You can enter some information here. So you can enter some information like uh, ABC, right? Okay, let me create another, another thing. Let me create a button. So I'll go to my sublime text. Uh, I'm going to give some information. I'll put a BR tag. BR means break. If I say BR, it means break. So this is the input. I'll also put a BR tag. I'll put another input tag, but this time I will make this input tag work like a button. How can I do that? I will say input. And then I will say type, type is an attribute. I'll say type equals text, sorry, submit. Okay, and then I'm going to close this guy. Okay, so I'll just put a BR here again. BR means break. That means it will just take you to the next line. That's it. And that's pretty much about it. I'll save this file again. So save this again, coming back to the page. And let's open this. Yeah, you see, I opened it. Now I have enter your name. I'm going to say Sovic. I'll say dot submit. I click on it. Nothing happens. Why? Because there is no JavaScript in behind. When you have a JavaScript added to this file, that's where when you click on the submit, something happens in the page. 
It happens because there is a JavaScript in behind that gets triggered when you click on a button in the page. There is nothing that I've configured in this case, which is why it's not working, right? But this link doesn't require a JavaScript because this is just, you're, you're already giving an attribute here in the uh, HTML saying href. href means you're basically pointing to a particular URL, another URL, okay? That URL information you have kept it here, okay? And then you simply go here and you click on it. I've already shown it to you. It just opens up the website, right? So that's pretty much about a HTML. That's, that's how a HTML looks like. HTML will have always uh, HTML, root, a header, a body. This is basically the HTML structure. You can take up any page. I'll go to any other page. So let me take you to uh, Amazon. Dot co. Dot uk. Okay. Let's open this up. Let's look at the source code behind it. How can I see the source code behind it? I'll go and hit the F12 in my in my keyboard, and that opens up my source code. Go to elements. Let's look at the element section. You see, I have a HTML. Okay, and then I have a head. See this? It's a HTML because it's the root element, and then there is a head. If I open this up. You see, I have a title. There has to be a title. See, I have a title. So what is the title exactly? Look at this guy. I have given, yeah, I've given the title of this page as, this is a wisdom QA sample. That's the title I have given. So whatever is coming on the tab is basically the title. Whatever is coming on the tab is basically the title. Similarly, if I go to amazon.co.uk, you have this amazon.co.uk in the title, right? That is what is mentioned here, in the title tag, you see that? And then we have, in the head tag, you basically keep all your scripts. These are all your JavaScripts, okay? And then if you actually go a little down, you will also see CSS. How do you see CSS? You will see CSS under style tag. Uh, no, it's not mentioned here. Maybe they are loading it later on. Let me see. Yeah, here, you see? This is the whole CSS. CSS as soon as the page loads, the CSS kicks in, okay? And basically beautifies your structure of the page. And that's why you see a beautiful page. This is all CSS, you see? A size small, font size so and so, color so and so, whatever. Everything is mentioned here. You, have to, you, have to, you need to know how to read this. I mean, right? it's not required right now to know how to read this, but eventually you will know. So background is slash FFF. This is basically the color. Slash FFF is basically the color of the background. Um, let me just try to see if I can find that out for you. Mm, styles, console, computer, even listener. Uh, no, no, I'm not able to pull up the of the background, but but that, that's the background. Slash FFF means I think it's black. Let me just check it, or white maybe. Let me just check it. Slash uh, FFF color code, color chart. Okay. See everything has a yeah. It's a white. You see that hex white. So the background is white, right? You understand how it is getting created, right? So this is basically your basic structure of any HTML page that you will ever come across. Okay, uh, let me take it out. I will expand this thing. Okay, 
So style, I'm going to close it. Uh, this is my header tag. I will close the header tag. And then I start with the body. Now, if I actually hover my mouse, this mouse here, if I hover on the body, you see, on the left-hand side, everything is getting grayed out. It's not grayed out exactly. It is basically uh, getting highlighted, which means it is showing you that when you're hovering on the a body tag, it is actually showing you that it, this is the body. Okay? And instead of the body, if you actually go down, you will see there are different, different structures. Okay? So, for example, nav update. Uh, wait a minute. I have to look for it. Yeah. This big one, actually. Script. No, I want to see the main body. Hold on. So if I inspect it, yeah, you see, when I actually hover on the span, it is it is highlighting on the left-hand side, which means it is pointing, it is showing you the representation of your, of, of, the, of the element in the body on the screen. It is showing you the representation of it. It's a span tag. Span class is basically the attribute, ID is basically the attribute, and the name is Ireland Republic of, right? You see that? It is getting highlighted, which means you are actually representing, I mean, by, by um, pointing to the, to the element, you are, you are showing the element in the, in the screen, in the right web page, okay? So this is basically a basic HTML structure, looks like. So if I go back to my, If I go back to my first screen, I'll go to the next screen here. It says HTML tree. Look at the HTML tree. Window is a top mode section, which you don't even see. Then comes the document. You don't even see that. These are inner component of a browser. You don't see them, okay? These are window and document is something that is the topmost uh, section or topmost layer of your web page or anything that is coming up in your screen that's the topmost layer window and document inside that the html starts okay html then gets the, uh, separates in two different sections one is the header another one is the body in the header you keep meta information like javascript css title link you can give some kind of a link okay link to a css file all this information will go in the header section. And in the body, you are giving div, script. So you're basically giving the actual elements, like a button, like a text box, like a link. Those information goes into the body. Okay? That's how layer by layer by layer a web page is created. Any, any questions on this? First two slides. Any questions? Yes, no. So these all to, uh, should be in one folder. Can we, it, it has to be in one folder. I didn't get that, I'm sorry, what? Um, the, the document and um, like the document which we made, it doesn't necessarily, it has to be in a folder, is it like, you know? No, 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 document is the, topmost layer of a web page and whatever you are saying head and body this is one page this is one page right an application is consists of hundreds of pages so you can say that each and every page is in one folder you can say something like that so document window and document is basically the topmost layer that, that goes on top of HTML. So when I, when I open a browser, so for example, let me open the browser, an empty browser, okay? Not even this. Um, when I open a simple browser, say, let me open Safari, okay? This is the window. Is it a web page? No. Is it a web page? No. Rajesh? It's not a web page, right? This is the window that comes from the application, the actual browser, 
right? Mm -hmm. And then you are going to say dot google dot com. And now a web page renders in front of you. This guy will have a proper HTML structure. If I actually go here and inspect, uh, I am not sure why the Safari not showing the inspection. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, file Safari. Outside of that search? No, whatever. I need to show, I need to see the uh, inspect option in Safari. I don't think it comes like that. Let me just check something. Services. Uh, no, it should show the dev tools. Mm. Help. Somewhere, somewhere on the gray area, the white area. Dev tools. No, but anyway, let me go back to uh, the screen. So again, this is a this is a web page. Okay, no, this is not a web page again. This is not a web page again, because I'm not able to. Yeah, I'm able to inspect. As we, okay, this is the, the way Chrome renders and the way Safari renders, it's so totally diff different. But anyway, if I go to the google.com, right, this is a proper web page. And if I go on, I say inspect, I actually see the similar structure. You see HTML, the topmost element. You see doc type. Doc type is document. The browser that got launched as soon as you installed a browser and you opened it, okay? That's the browser, which is the window. And then it comes the document. This is the doc type, okay? And then under document, you have HTML. That's that HTML, okay? And then you have the head and body. This structure you will find throughout any web page whatsoever, okay? That's what I'm trying to show you in the um, slide deck okay window is a browser document and then inside that we have HTML and inside that I have a head and body so every application will have hundreds of pages and every page will have this structure every page okay now moving on to the next section it says understanding browser dev tools is very very important for us to understand the browser dev tools okay dev tools are the set of tools embedded in browser, which helps us to debug HTML and JavaScript, okay? DevTools are present both in Chrome, Firefox, Edge browsers. In order to open DevTool, you have to hit F12 in your keyboard. You can also right click on the page and click on inspect to open the DevTools, like the way I did. So what, what I do is very simple. I go to, not this guy, I'll go to my Chrome. I'm going to a web page. Let's go to my web page. Uh, .com. And I hit the enter. I'm in my web page. And then I'm going to actually see what's going on inside this page. How will I do that? I can go ahead and just click on this this particular button. Or maybe I can right click on this inquiry button and click on inspect. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Because of this pop-up, I'm not able to click on the inquiry button. Let me close this pop-up. Now I will click on it and inspect. Okay, now you see the button got inspected so now this button, this inspection is telling me about this particular button. This particular button is having 
this particular button is basically a span and it has an ID called so and so and the name of the button is inquire now you see that that's what it, it is giving but it doesn't mean that the button that is having span ID right in this application it is span but that doesn't mean that in any other application it will have the similar structure no every application is different let's go to Amazon okay I have a sign in button here right right click on it inspect the structure of the button is totally different a span class nav action inner okay let's go to another button uh, say Expedia Expedia I'll go in inside Expedia let's look at some other button the search button right right click on it inspect this is a totally different button starts with a different tag called button type submit this is the same thing that I just created earlier in, in our sample page it was input type submit here it is called button type submit okay by looking at the button you cannot exactly know that how this button was created until unless you inspect it you inspected it now I see that it is a button of type submit and there are some other information as well which I will discuss about it later on okay this is how you basically open up your browser console or uh, the dev tools and the dev tools you try to inspect or you try to find the details of the component this is a text box right click on it inspect this is the whole text box that I am pointing at if I if I hover my mouse on it you see the the let me do it again okay you see that that particular text box is getting highlighted in green on the left hand side which means you are basically pointing to the right element on the page right so what we have to do is so from automation perspective think like this we will use selenium web driver to open up the browser go to our application any application and then after I land into the application I have to interact with the application I can interact with the application by using by creating or by locating these elements in the page we have to locate right if I have to interact with an element in the page these are called elements right this button these text box uh, this checkbox this drop down everything is an element if I want to interact with the element I need to locate the element in the page okay so there are different different locating locator strategies that selenium supports and we will learn them right so we will use the locator strategy we will learn uh, the we will understand the element and then we will use that element information in our test case and then using that we will actually interact with that element and then that's how we will basically step by step build it build a test case suppose I want to uh, go ahead and enter the city living from and going to I want to enter that information so I have to get to know about this element then I have to use selenium web driver to send the information to this element and then I have to click on the search button again by locating this button and then performing a dot click method on this particular button and that's how your test case works step by step by step you keep on uh, writing every single step as per your test demands by locating all the elements in the page okay so it says so this is what it says this is a browser browser dev tool okay so let's go to different tabs in dev tools that is what we need to understand dev tool is a full suite of tools for developers though we will be using only the elements tab 
right? Because we want to find the elements in the web page. So we will be mostly working with the elements tab, but still we need to know very well about the other tabs. Okay, so let's do the first tab here, elements. Elements shows the HTML of the current page. That's fine, we just saw that, okay? Then we have console. Console shows log sources, shows the evolved JavaScript files. So let's do something. I'll go to my console. I'll go to my element here. I go to this particular page. I'll, this is my element tag where I have, again, the header, the body, and everything, which I have explained, that is common for every application. That's fine. And then we have console. In this console, I'll clear the console. In this console, basically, we have all our JavaScript um, execution result gets logged in the console. So for example, if I say alert, this is a temp alert. Okay? If I hit this, what will happen, you know? See this. So what did I do exactly? I just, I just wrote a simple JavaScript line, okay? In order to create this alert as if this alert is coming from the application Expedia. So at runtime, I just said, when the application is running, when this application is right now running in front of us, I just triggered, I just hooked in a simple code, JavaScript code, to get this pop-up in front of me. And I can click on OK to dismiss it. So when this application runs, so for example, Dublin, London, um, January, yeah, 4 January, and search. So you see, there are a lot of logs that are coming out. Who is giving this log? The application itself is throwing these logs in the console, okay? So this is what the console does. It basically logs, it basically shows the uh, log that are coming from the application. When, when, you are, when you are creating a application, you create different logs to understand, you add different logging statements within the, within the source code to understand how your application is performing at every line, or how the execution is happening. So these are the logs that are actually getting thrown from the application. It is not an error, it's just a log that are, that are coming out, okay? Uh, that's pretty much about the console part. Then we have network. I have I have shown this to you already earlier, but I'm going to show you. Network basically shows all the network calls that are being made by the page. When the page is doing some action, it is firing network calls all around the web. I mean, what are the webs or what are the servers? It is uh, relevant to the page. It tries to interact with it in order to compute some information for you, for the user, right? So I'll go to network. I'll clear up all my network call logs. And I will simply click on this Mandrake hotel. I clicked. Okay, it's opening up in a different page. No, in that case, I will not be able to show you. Let me see, yeah, I can show you. So you see uh, the network call, and it is basically, there are multiple network calls that was fired in different, different servers, okay, which basically 
brings these logs in front of you. So let's look at this add short chess. So let's look at what exactly did I do. Google.com adsense search ads.js. What exactly is this? This is some kind of a server which is handling ads, Google ads for Expedia. You can understand that by looking at the URL itself. You don't have to know anything else. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Then there is an the iframe in the page. What is iframe? I will talk about that later on. Okay, what else we have? We have a container. Again, something to do with Google syndication. Not sure. We have to know this application pretty well to actually tell you what is shown. So you see, this guy, this is what? That was the image actually, a dot .gif file. One cross one dot .gif. Uh, don't know, it didn't load anything. Let's see. Okay. Here, that's a JPG file. Let me open. Yeah, you see that Mandrake Hotel, the screen of it, the first screen of it, there's a JPG file somewhere in the server. So there's a network called made to the server and pulled in all the resources from the server so that it can be shown to you in the screen. Simple. As soon as the web page is there, you made an action, as a user, you made an action on the page, and there is a code behind it that knows what to perform when that action is made. So it basically loads, it basically goes to a particular server and fetches information for you so that it can be rendered or shown to the user. That's pretty much about it, okay? So I think, I don't know, these, these all, these are carousals, right? It is also coming from somewhere. You see, every time I click on it, it basically brings a JPG file from the server. You see that? Every time I do it, now you see, because, because when the carousal, I, I started going left, it already pulled the JPG file for me, right? So if I do it again, this is already pulled for me from the server, and it is already displays, displayed to the user. Now, if I again go to the same direction, the network calls are not made for the same file again. It was made only once. Let's go. I have already seen this. Already seen this. Seen this. Again, a new file. A new file call was made. Because you clicked on this button, which called the server and bring and, and got you back with the respective image. Again, go out a new page comes, a new image comes. That's how they have built the web page. You have to understand, you have to play with the web page for a while to understand how they have built it. Why, why, didn't, why didn't they, can any one of you tell me, why didn't they load all the images at, at once, why? Because of space management. Sorry? Space performance, no, performance issues. Performance issues. Because if I want to load, there are, I don't know, there are 61, 61 different images coming from the server, right? There are 61 different images coming from the server. Is it feasible? Do you think, is it feasible? There, there, are, there are hundreds or thousands of hotels in, in London. Or uh, that I'm that Expedia can show show to me. Is it feasible that I can load all the images, all the heavy images, at once for the user? Is it feasible, or is it is it is it the right thing to do? No, never. That's how they have built it. They're smart enough to create the website in such a way that whenever a particular information is required, only then they will go to the network, they will go to the respective server and bring that information for you. Because to avoid the performance issue, as simple as that. Is this I want to know if, only for the images? No, for everything, for everything. 
I'm, I'm giving you an images, images uh, example because you can easily relate that. In modern, modern times, if you remember, the first screen that I showed you, um, let me actually, I mean, because I showed this to you, now this will make sense. Uh, let me actually go and pull my first slide that I showed it to you. PPT. Okay. Right? This page, if you remember this, I told you that every section of a web page is talking to different different services web services and different business logic server so when the user requests that information only then the information is fetched in front of you so that the performance of the application is better it improves as a user you will not know what's going on because you will see something in the page that's okay but when a particular information you are requesting you, are, you made an action in the page, that will go to the respective server and get you back with the information which gets loaded in front of you. This is the exact same thing I just showed it to you. You clicked on that carousal, which actually made a call to the server, got you back with the right image. Does that make sense now, everybody? I'm just trying to give you and understanding how an application works. Can you tell me if you understood this part? Yes, no? Hello, are you able to hear me? Hello? Guys, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm just trying to understand. Did you guys get it? What I'm trying to show you here. That what exactly is happening behind the screen? I mean, there are a lot of people works in IT. I understand, but they don't understand what exactly happens behind the screen of the application. Can you tell me you understood this part? Because this is very important for us. This is very important because when we actually write test cases, okay, using APIs, you will need to understand, you will need to um, kind of think about the test case from this particular, this concept perspective. I want to get a yes or no from everybody. If no, I will re-explain it. Boy, yeah, it's it's trying to communicate with the uh, the host web services and bring back to say if, if if this is the normal laptop and it'll go kind of communicate to the web services and bring it back to what you are trying to access. True, and the point is that it 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 will not load all the information at 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 once. It will That's not load right. all the information at once. It depends on, it depends on the user action. Yeah, you know it what? depends upon your input, like whatever you're requesting for. What is your requirements? Then it, you know, okay, go it's just that. not that. It's just not that. I'll just show you something. Um, if I actually go back to my Expedia. Not here. Okay. This is the result that came back to me from the server. Again, it, it requested the parameters that I've sent to the server. Server computed that information, got this information from somewhere, and it came back to me with a result. So this whole result of all these guys that came to me, right? Now see something, there, are, there is a lot of Results that came to me, right? Yeah. And number of results that came to me. Now, can you tell me, guys, why do I have this? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why do I have this? Okay, first and foremost, what, what, what is this called? This section called, what is this called? Anybody? Is it indexing? I don't know. No, it's called pagination. It's called pagination. There's a term. Yeah, exactly, Pavan, you're right. It's a pagination. Okay, so pagination means what? Pagination means, now, all these information, 3,808 information is actually got filtered from your parameter that you have sent to the application, right? So many different information got computed from the application, totally fine. But it is not smart to show all the information in one single page. Your application will break if you do that. So what do you do? What's the best smart way to do it? You break it down to pages. It's very simple. It's a very simple thing. Think logically. From an from a machine perspective, is it better to do all the job in at once, or do you want to group it and do it in small section? Obviously, the letter is the right thing to do. You group it and do it in in chunk. That is exactly what the application is doing for you. Why am I telling this to you? Because you should know how the application works. I want to know if, if every, whatever I'm saying today, is it making sense for everybody? Because guys, if you want to work in testing industry, you need to know how the application works in and out. I want to, I want to get a yes or no from you guys. Okay, I got one yes. What about others? Dipanita, Vidya, Pavan. Pavan, you, you must be okay because you are already in the industry, so uh, you must be definitely okay. What about Dipanita and Vidya? Dipanita? Yes, no? Sorry, are you there? I have just unmuted you. Can Hi. you talk? Hi, hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. Tell me. I'm, re I'm replying you in chat, but you are not able to see anything. No, I, I'm not seeing any chat coming from you. Oh, I sent yes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I, I got it now, I got it now. Okay. Uh, it was not showing to me, okay. Vidya, you are also okay? Uh, yes. Right. Uh, so business logic server is used to for um, uh, for getting the business logics, and the web service is used to for the um, uh, for no, uh, transaction no. of the data. Okay. Can you give me an example of what is business logic and what is web services from this application perspective, the one that I'm showing you? Can you give me some understanding? What is a business logic? And what is the web services? Any idea? Um, the itinerary we are creating is the business logic, the, the, the location we are selecting, and the number of people that are all business logic. And... Um, hmm. That means the parameter or the filter that we are creating right now to get the list is the business logic, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, it is, it is, it is the business logic. And what is the web services? Web services, um, the data from one application to other application, it uses the XML data. So right. I guess. So, so, so to build the business logic, the, to build the business logic, you depend on web services. Yes. So 
all this information that is coming to you, there is a high possibility that these informations are not coming, or these informations are not stored directly inside the Expedia.com. There is a high possibility that Expedia.com is talking to another web services somewhere. Like there is a company called I don't know if you guys know yeah, about uh, the, the the other application. It is trying to communicate and get the details from here and showing it. Is it working? Exactly, like? exactly, exactly. So for example, if you know about this company called Amidus, 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 right? Amidus. Amidus. Airlines. This guy. Exactly. So all your flight information is processed by this guy, this company, Amethyst. Every airline information that, that you are seeing there for the web page. For the web page, it is Amethyst. But on the other hand, for the mobile, it is travel port. Travel port. You see? So the travel port guys, the tra travel port guys gives you the similar information about airlines for the mobile devices. Okay. Amadeus gives it for the web devices, web application. Right? So this are, these, are, these are not the actual application which, where you can go and book a ticket. No. So companies like Expedia might have an engagement with Amadeus. And then what they will do, they will take the services of Amadeus, which will basically give you the flight information. Some, that information will be then computed by the business logic of Expedia, and then the result is shown to the user. Is, is, that, is that making sense for everybody? I'm just trying to understand. Yes. Okay, that's how an application works, guys. Okay, and you slowly uh, we will we will go much in deeper. Slowly we will actually talk to those web services. Uh, this section that I have spoken about in our in our course, which is this part, right? Uh, REST API automation is a very very crucial for this particular automation this type of automation where you talk to the rest services get the information and then use that information in your ui test it's very important it's very important for you to do that right so we will get to that later on but anyway we are here okay uh, sorry i think we have to go one step back okay so we were talking about network tab that's fine what we have done when we have performance tab I'm getting a question, let me take that. What happened to my mouse? Just a minute. I'm not able to see my mouse. Okay. Sorry, this is my, this is not important. Okay. You will also share the interview question on each part. Yes, Zibanita, we will talk about the interview questions. I'll get you prepared for the interview. But first and foremost, you need to learn all these technologies first, right? The ones that I have mentioned, Core Java, TestNG, Cucumber, WebDriver. So we are just right now going from Cucumber to Web, sorry, Core Java to WebDriver. I mean, this, this Core Java is not even started properly, we have to come to back to it a lot, but I'm just saying, and then we'll go to WebDriver, we'll do this journey quite a lot, and then we will go to TestNG, Cucumber, PageOpit model, Excellent Report, uh, GitHub in between, Maven, then Appium for mobile automation, REST API automation. At the last, we'll hit the Jenkins and Docker. Okay, that's the whole, whole uh, plan. All right. So now the question is that we are, we, we saw why it is, right? We saw why we need pagination. We got pagination because to improve the performance 
if I if I if I'm showing every every the full result in one page, then we are screwed. Not possible. Okay. All right. That's one thing. Second thing is, um, second thing is about performance. So let's look at this performance guy. Okay. I'll make some action. I'll go back to my Expedia.com again. Expedia.com again. Let's look at this. Performance tab tag uh, tab we don't use much, but you know we if we if we want we can use it also for testing. Uh, I'll just show you. So I'm going to hit. You know I'll just give some information here first. Uh, not the flight and hotel, just the flights. So Dublin, uh, London. Uh, January. Okay, let's make it as six January. That's pretty much about it. I'm going to now hit the record button. Okay. Now I'm going to say search. Okay. Something is happening in the in the screen. It is searching the result until the result is shown. You see, you are seeing some empty boxes. This is called empty state of an application. You understand? When you see, when you don't see the data coming to you, it's called empty state of an application, or you can say a skeleton of the result that was shown to you. The actual result, the actual information didn't get popped out in front of you. So I'm going to say stop. Let's see what happens now. Processing profile. Okay. This is a chart that comes in front of you to basically show you the performance of the application. So it says 2000 milliseconds. 2000 milliseconds means two seconds. In two seconds, what was loaded? Then in 10th second what was loaded then in 10th to whatever till now what was loaded everything is shown to you it gives you an overall understanding how your application is getting performed how your application is performing okay network okay what was the the in the, in the fourth second all the network calls were made mostly you see that then frames what are different frames got uh, got uh, rendered in front of you in which timeline? You see that? Uh, interactions. Input. Mouse up. So we, we made some mouse up somewhere in between. It's just showing you what kind of in, inputs that we gave, right? Animation. I don't know what animation is showing me here. But anyway, I hope you get the point. The point is, it is basically showing you a detailed un structure of your application that is coming up in front of you. This four different stuff you should be understanding. Okay. Um, there is also a way. Let me check. There is also a way. I can slow down my loading. Just one minute. Yeah, let's look at this again. All right, let's look at this. See how much you can do just with the browser console. How much you can test your application just with the browser console itself. Okay, again, the same parameters are going in. Let me clear out everything. Okay, it's, it's just started profiling, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to say the network is online, but I want, to, I want to see how my application is performing in a slow 3G mode and the CPU throttling is, there is no throttling, but meaning that uh, whatever the CPU, the, the application is 
right now having i'm just keeping it that that means i'm just trying to check my application in a in a normal cp in a in a modern CP, uh, pc in a modern application in a modern system i want to see how my application is performing in a in a slow network okay and then i just perform the search let me record it record search okay it's profiling let's wait and a slow 3g how the application performs let's see that i'll stop it it is going to give me some information now you see now things are different now it took six seconds to actually load this much and then rest of it came to me right you can you can check your application in different scenarios in different uh, environments you can you can bring your cp uh, sorry not cp what am i saying you can bring your system you can downgrade your system performance as well so i go and say i want to downgrade my system to six times slower i want to see how my application is performing in a slow 3g and in a system which is very very slow okay let's go back record search okay now you see how much time it is taking for us to bring back the result i want to test my application thoroughly right i want to know how my application is performing in different situation that is how you test it okay it's still not loaded it's still loading you see that in a slow 3g and six times slower cpu um, or uh, system speed it is still loading now it is loaded i'm going to stop it now it's going to profile it for me and show it show it to me it's still loading okay now you see it took 15 seconds to just bring this page to me am i making sense guys whatever i just showed it to you are very very important thing from testing yes. perspective okay. from a tester's perspective sorry i didn't hear you i didn't hear you oh, uh, sorry. What is the meaning of this, uh... i'm not able to hear you you are very slow you are very your voice is very low hello yeah, can you, Dipanita, you are not using a headset. No, no, I am using headphone. But I don't know why your voice is low, very low. Okay, yeah. tell me, I'll try to hear again. Tell me. Uh, what is the meaning of this uh, processing profile? Which pro, which which one? Processing profile. Oh, yes. processing profile means nothing. Whatever when I'm recording it, hmm. what I'm when I'm recording an action in the in the page in the in the application after i complete the recording of it it is so when i when i start the recording and when i stop the recording that whole information gets stored in the browser uh, systems and then it basically process the profile or process that information that got recorded and then presents you back with this result that's called as processing profile okay Okay, I want to know something. I want to know if you guys, whatever I showed it to you in last half an hour, does that make sense? Yeah, how did you, how did you get this window, sorry? It's, it's very simple. You just, you, just, you just hit F12 in your screen. Oh, the developer tools, okay. okay. So the developer tools. And you go to the performance tab, elements tab, console, sources, network, everything memory application everything this right. one single tool itself is very powerful tell me yeah we will uh, replay the videos in the weekend again and 
then uh, we will take end of the day once again. If there will be any question, then we will take I am not hearing. I am not hearing Dipanita. I don't know why. Tell me what happened. I don't know why your element in the actual web page, right? So for example, here you can see an anchor tag. Anchor tag is represented by A within arrow brackets. Uh, hello. In, yeah, hello. Yeah, I can't see the screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Can you see the screen now? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So understanding HTML tag, HTML tag represents a control, okay? Or a web element or an element in the web page. So for example, anchor tag is nothing but a link. It represents a link and it is, it is, it is denoted or it is created with A within two arrow brackets. That is how you represent an anchor tag, okay? Um, let's look at some real-time example in amazon.co.uk, okay? I'll go to the amazon.co.uk. I'll close this browser control. I'll go to amazon.co.uk. I think I have already opened it here, yeah. Let me refresh this page. Okay, if I go down at the very bottom, there are a lot of links here which will, when I click on this link, it will navigate me to the next page. Make sense? All right, so now, oh, it, it, it is opening up in the same page itself, same uh, tab itself, that's okay. So this is a link, right? How does this link look like? How do you inspect this link? You right click on this. So this is called inspection. When you try to get to understand any element in the in the web page from technical perspective, from test automation perspective, we call it as inspection. We are inspecting the element. Okay. So to inspect the element, you basically right click on it and say inspect. When I do that, you open the browser control again, right? Now you see what we have. We have an anchor tag. And this anchor tag is having an attribute called ahrefs. And then there is a text called sell on Amazon. That is exactly what we see here. And then the href is basically the link where you will be targeted or navigated when you click on this particular link. You will be navigated to that. Similarly, if I go to the next one, again, there is another anchor tag which is having sell under private brands, okay? There's another link. You are basically creating, or you're trying to, you're trying to find out the um, links in the page because you want to click on this link and you want to navigate to the next page and you want to perform something. That's what is the whole so we will be having uh, that many of HRFs for all the links? Yeah, obviously. Every, a link will be not a link if there is no attribute, HRF. HRF, if HRF denotes, HRF, HRF contains the navigation link. Every link, any link that you see, every link will have HRF. Any link will have HRF. Otherwise, you will not be able to navigate to that page. Make sense? Okay. okay. Right? So that's, that's, that's what the inspection talks about. Now, once you do the inspection, I also need to get this also, uh, after inspection, I also need to extract the information about this anchor tag or this particular element that is sell on Amazon this particular element, I need to extract the information out of it and then use it in our test case. How can I do that? I can write a X path, okay? It is, uh, it is a script or, yeah, I can say it's a script. You can write a script, uh, we call it as X path, to use this information, to extract this information of this particular element 
and provide that into our test case. So for example, if I want to write an XPath of this particular link, how can I do it? I will do uh, F here, Control F here, which will bring this window, you see, in the bottom, it got me this window. It says, find by string, selector, or XPath. In this window, I will write my XPath. So I'm writing something which will not make sense to you because I have not spoken about it. Anyway, I'm writing something here. I'll say A, and inside that, I'm going to say, text text equals right that's my x path i've created an x path and also you see something one of one you see that section here one of one what does it mean it means that this particular x path that you have created is uniquely found in this page there is only one element with this X part. So the whole automation game is this. You need to write a script to perform an action on a web element. And that element should be uniquely found in the web page. That is it all about. You need to uniquely found, find that particular element in the web page so that you can perform an action. For example, if I just say, if I don't this, if I don't give this information, you see how many links am I getting? One of 367. If you say your Selenium that I want to click on anchor, okay, it will be confused that which one to pick up it will pick up the topmost because right now it is pointing to the first anchor that it found here, right? But I don't want to click on this guy. I want to click on the bottom footer link that I showed it to you, which is why I'm adding some additional information to uniquely find this element, which is the targeted element for my test case. And then I'm going to use this information in my test case, and then I'm going to perform the action on top of it, whether it is a click or whatever is required. This is what is you're going to do as a part of automation. Does that make sense? Yes, no. Yes, no, guys. I'm not getting an answer. Why am I not seeing the answer from anybody? You're typing okay. okay. Everybody's yeah. typing. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's not uh, it's not uh, showing me as a highlight. So whenever there is a text that comes uh, to my screen, it, it it flashes in my screen from the uh, Zoom application. That flash is not happening. If I open the chat window, only then I see it but that flash doesn't happen, I don't know why. Anyway. The system is going in a holiday mode. <laughs> totally, totally. So <laughs> that, is, that is the scenario, right? So you are, the whole idea is this, you need to find an element uniquely in the page and then perform an operation on top of it. That's it, that's, it. that's what you talk about automation, okay? So we find an anchor tag, totally fine. Okay, we're going to talk, we're going to see some other elements. We're going to see about this guy. It is a select box. Every, every tag or every element in the, in the web page is different, okay? This is a select box. If you, if you click on this guy, it basically shows you a list of elements. We call this, this guy here a select box. Why? Because if I inspect this element, it is of type select, you see? It's a select tag. If I expand this tag, it basically shows you all the options, all departments, Alexa skills, and blah, blah, blah. All of them are presented here, okay? You basically perform an action on this, right? You basically click on, you basically select one of these values, and then you write your script on top of it, depending on what type of, Test case you're writing. Okay, so 
let me go back to where I was. Okay, so we just said in footer search, we have these two link, careers and about us, and then we I just showed it to you, uh, where does it navigate to? Then we have a product search box, which is basically of type input. Okay, then we have a select tag, I just showed it to you. It's of, it's of type select. So you see, we just learned about three different tags now. One is an anchor tag, then it's another one is an input tag, and there is a select tag. Now, the point is, this input tag can be used as a text box in some cases. An input tag can be also used as a button in some case, right? I showed it to you. If you create, if you add an attribute called type equals submit to an element, then that input tab tag works like a button. Otherwise, it works like a text box. Okay, these things will not sit or not get registered in your head until and unless you practice. When I say practice, you need to practice with different different application. You can take up Vexpedia, you can take up uh, you can take up um, you know Trivago, you can take up any hotel website, you can take up any um, you know e-commerce website, whatever. Okay, and every application you will see that they are created in different ways. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. What do you mean by HTML tags? We just learned about A, anchor tag, input, text box, and select tag, which is a drop down. Let's go to the next thing understanding HTML attributes. Okay, HTML components do not only work with tags. Okay, they need to be combined with attributes as well so that you can you can make it work right so for example careers okay you will not be able to navigate to careers until you put a href which i just showed it to you okay and then you will also find some of the uh some of the tags okay some of the tags here some of the tags here which will have multiple attributes so the anchor here is having two attributes one is href, the other one is all called class. Okay, how do you use that? I mean, from our testing perspective, how do I use it? Okay, I will basically, when I'm, when I'm trying to find an anchor tag uniquely in my page, in my, in my uh, application, I will use a combination of href tag or along with href tag, I can also use a class tag. I will use a combination of those two. I will show you how to do that combination. Here in this case, I have input tag. I'm saying the type is text. There is an ID, another attribute, and then there is a value and there is a name. These are different different attributes that are added to a tag, which will, which will make that tag work, right? Then we have autocomplete. So this, this HTML, this input tag here, it has got so many attributes, type, ID, value, name, autocomplete, placeholder, class, DIR, tab index. You see, there are so many attributes. You can keep n number of attributes to a HTML tag. The developers will do that depending on what is the business requirement. So what does this tab index means? Can anybody tell me what is this tab index means? Yes, no? Can anybody tell me what is a tab index means? The one that I just showed it to you here. No? No. Tab index is basically accessibility. You're providing accessibility feature in your application. When I say accessibility, what is accessibility? Accessibility means that you are creating an, your application just not for a normal human being. You're also creating an application for a visually impa impaired uh, person, okay? So what happens with, when I say tab index, so if I take you to the application here, any application here, Okay, and I go to amazon.co.uk. Okay, 
when I hit tab in my in my keyboard, you see in every tab something is getting focused. You see that? These are called focus rings, which means that when a visually impaired person access the application, even they will be able to use it because in their system, there will be something called a screen reader. Okay, so when they hit tab, at every tab, the screen will read that section and it will read it loud. And then they can hit the mouse or the keyboard enter to perform an action. So when I say tab index nine, which means if you hit tab nine times, you basically go to that particular input box. Am I making sense? Yes, no? Vidya, that is called as accessibility testing. We don't do that. Uh, there, there are there are uh, different accessibility teams who will who who, who knows how to um, give a check for an application if that application is accessible uh, proof or not, accessible friendly or not. That is called tab index. So you are tabbing nine times to reach out to the text box input text box right so that is what it is so every element out there will have a tag and then the attribute and every attribute is having some requirement or some kind of a functionality like the one i just explained about tab index right so that's that uh, now that we are here now see, how do we find an element? I just showed you how do we inspect an element, and I also have also showed you how do we extract that information as a as a XPath from the browser. I've shown that to you in form of an XPath, right? So once I have extracted the information, I will have to use that information in our test case, right? So it says Selenium provides a method called as find by, this is called find by commands, to find elements based on different attributes and tags, okay, from the test case perspective, from the Java test perspective, okay? All we have to do is, we have to find the unique attribute of the element and then find it by the Java test. So let's try to understand. Um, okay, let's, let, before I actually do that, I want to show you something. One more thing, just just um, occurred to me. So what I'll just do is, I'll go to sign in. The sign in button, hmm. Sign in button, I have a continue. Right. Can you, uh, no, I don't want to show you, show my password to you. Uh, I can do something. Okay, I can do something. I've created this guy, right? Um, I've created this, sorry. Okay, so here, I've created this HTML file. Let me open with, I've already opened it with Sublime, right? So I've created this input tag here, that's fine. I'm going to copy this part, paste it here, okay? Enter your name or enter username. Let's make it as username. Enter username. Enter password. I have an input tag. I have already explained to you what is the input tag is. I can add an attribute to input tag, okay? And that is text. Uh, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is another attribute. 
let me just confirm it one more time. It is, yeah, exactly, I was right, yeah, I was right. So input is called type equals password. You see, I've just added a type equals password. I've, I've given a functionality to my input box. I'm going to save this now, and I'm going to just render this page again. Okay, enter username. This is a normal input box. All these fields you can see, all this text you can see. In the password, if I enter something, you don't see it, right? Because I have just given an additional functionality to your, to the, to the text box by saying the attribute as password. Now, if I want to actually check anybody's password, so what what happens nowadays is when you enter a password for an application, it gets added to the cookies, right? But many cases you will not be able to access the cookie information because that cookie information in in Chrome or in Firefox will be hidden behind a master password, okay? If you try to ever um, get the password from your cookie, it will be asked to give you a master password to unlock the password, all the passwords that are stored in the cookie, right? So, but if you still want to see this password, how do you see that? It's very simple, you see? Just try it in your any application where you have a password, and when you are opening the application, it shows you the added password already, right? Right click on this, inspect, right? All you do is at runtime, at runtime, just change this password to text. Hit enter, that's it. Your password revealed, right? Do you see that? It can, it happens even with Gmail. It happens with any application. As soon as you change the password type to text, your password reveals. Right, so your attribute of the tag gives the functionality to that particular tag, right? So I'm going to show you about the finding element from the Java. So what I will do is I will go back to my code. Uh, this is my Amazon.co.uk. I have set up my Chrome driver, uh, which will pull my, which will bring the Chrome driver, which will launch the Chrome driver or Chrome browser, and which will, okay, let me, uh, which, let me plug in my charger, hold on. So now what happens is with this particular method or with this particular line here, I'm creating a reference for Chrome driver class. You know, I have already spoken about reference variable. Okay, I'm creating an instance of Chrome driver and I'm referring that instance of Chrome driver with the name driver, which is the reference variable, right? Now, using the difference variable, I'm calling a method called dot get. Inside dot get method, I'm passing an in information called a string I'm passing inside the get method, which will basically let me launch this application, right? So once I launch this application, let's launch this application first and see, because uh, Rajesh was not there yesterday. So I'm just going to launch the application first. I'll show it to you. So my Chrome browser is getting started, no problem at all. The application got launched by Selenium, totally fine. So once the application is launched, what I want to do is two things. I want to enter some information here, and I want to click on this button. Because I want to enter some information here, and I want to click on this button, I have to get the X path, I have to locate them in the browser console, 
extract the X part out of it and supply that to my Java test so that I can enter the information from Java, the actual test, right? So how do I do it? I'll do an inspect on it, which will bring me to this page here. So this page is this particular tag is an input input tag as we know that input tag ID is two tab search text box. Okay, so all I have to do is this. I'll copy this guy. I'll say I'm creating an export actually. So I'll say command F, control F, and then I'll say input, and then I will say at ID because the attribute is ID and then I'm going to say this is my ID so you see one of one so this element is found one of one in my in my browser right I copy this part this is my X part I go to supply this information into my test case how do I do that I simply go back to my test and I say this I call certain methods coming out of the driver reference variable dot find element find element by dot xpath okay and I'm going to pass on the xpath information and then I'm going to give some information here I'll call another method called send keys these methods if you you didn't see it Rajesh yesterday but these methods are actually coming out of the box by adding selenium jar file into the project so what is a jar file i've explained all of it in in the last video please go through it once okay so basically uh, all these methods are coming from selenium library that we have downloaded from their website so we are not creating these methods dot send keys by xpath dot find element nothing i'm not coming creating anything it's all there in the library that we downloaded from selenium website and we have added to this particular project which is why we are able to access this i'm going to say that i'm i'm i'm, I'm searching for one plus one plus come on one plus 60 60 that's what i'm trying to search for once i'm entering once i once i call the method called send keys what it will do is it will enter the value 1 plus 60 inside this text box okay how it is all happening it is all happening from the slide which I have explained to you earlier so let me go back to my slide deck uh, fifth maybe yeah fifth no 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 not fifth sorry sixth here right so what's happening is you're writing a Java test which is a green section here you're calling the web driver library or the selenium library in which you have all these methods dot send keys dot click whatever it is you are basically performing a dot click method that will basically um, give that information of dot click to the web driver server which is basically a web services server or a rest endpoint which will which will accept that information of dot click or dot send keys it will convert that to a javascript and then it will perform the relevant action on the browser from the browser it will fetch the response and then give it back to the test that's what happens so the, i'm just trying to create the whole thing through my code by doing this so this is my actual test case which is this guy here and then when I hit and these are the methods dot send keys and all they are all coming from the selenium library and the send keys behind the scene of the send keys method you're basically supplying a JSON object or a JSON information to the web driver endpoint and then web driver will process it further to the browser 
and then the next step will be I want to click on a button. So driver dot find element by dot export. Come on. Export and then I am going to say what? This guy, right? This is a button, search box. So inspect. This is my no, not this, sorry. Inspect. Why is it inspecting here? Oh, it's not inspecting. Hold on. Yeah. Input type submit value go. So I'm going to create an export of that. So input at value equals go. I can use anything, right? Any attribute. I can use one attribute. I can use multiple attributes, whatever it is. My whole goal is to make it uniquely find in the page. I can use multiple combination of attribute as well. So if I want to use another attribute, I can simply say value go and at type equals submit. You see? So I, I just use two attributes. One and two attributes. My whole goal is to find one, I mean, uniquely find the element. So by the first attribute itself, I was able to do that. So I don't need to use the second attribute. That's fine. Only one element, one, one attribute, that's okay. And then I say that let's go back to my selenium. And then I say this. And then I say, I want to perform a click on a button, obviously, dot click, dot click will basically help me performing the click on a button and that's it right now let me run this guy it's a very basic html or a simple test case that i've written i'm going to run this now run as java application and the chrome browser starts enters the information hits enter or click on the search button and you have the result in front of you Right? There are other methods like you saw, you saw, you're seeing this guy showing result for the one plus 60, right? So how do I, how, how do I, how do I confirm that I am actually seeing the relevant information or my search was done properly, which means you need to verify that this guy is coming from somewhere. This guy is actually getting populated. How can I do it? I can right click on it. Do I inspect again? And let me inspect again. So you can do inspect in two ways, right? One is by right clicking on the element and say inspect, you can do that. Or you can click on this small arrow on this left top corner of the browser console and then point it to the respective element. That will also show you, okay? This is my, this is my span, okay? So now you see that the span that I have is not having much of an information. It says span of class, A size medium, okay? If I just use this, let's look at it. If I just use this information dot span at class equals this. If I just use this information, then, oh yeah, this is, this is only one. Perfectly fine. This is uniquely found. Perfectly fine. We are good with that, right? So I'm just going to use this guy. And what I will do is I will do this. I'll go back to my code here. And I will use another method, okay? I will say driver. So now see, I'll say string, okay? Result, I'm creating a variable string, result, equals driver dot get text it's another method uh, sorry driver dot find element my bad i have to find the element first right driver dot find element by export and i'm going to just say 
this guy here and dot get text. What exactly I'm doing here? All am I doing is after I click on this button, when this new page shows up, I want to basically check the result of this saying showing result for one plus six C. If this matches, so this dot get text method will do what? It will basically get you this information. This information showing result for 60. You see that? You're getting this information. Okay, you see? You see how they have divided? They have divided the, the first span is giving you what? Showing result for. And the second span is giving you 1 plus 60. Okay? That's not right that's not what i want i want to get the whole result showing result for one plus 60 i want to get the whole result so how can i do it guys what i can do is i can actually get the xpath of this element or this element okay or this element and then this element what what by doing this what will happen is i will be only able to get the result of the first element here uh, let me check. Tab index, no, tab index is zero. That's the anchor. Um, let me check. Uh, sure, Dipan, no problem. That's okay. So all I am trying to do is I'm trying to get the X path of it. I mean, uh, get the text out of it, right? So what I will do is I can do a tab index. But that will get me this one also. I don't want that. 1 plus 16 BR tab index is not required. I want to actually get both of these guys together. Mm -hmm. I can actually find it separately and then merge it. I can do that. If I want, okay, um, yeah, I think that should be good. I can basically. Uh, Savik. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Initially, we are giving the input as uh, one plus sixty. The same information is uh, displaying here. So that input merging with uh, showing results for can be done, right? Yeah, I can do that, but but you see, I gave one separately plus separately sixty separately, right? Yeah. yeah. And the result that came as is one plus is one word, and then sixty separately, right? Yeah, as well as uh, case uh, insensitive. Yeah, case insensitive, right? So that will not work out. Yeah. I yeah, I yeah. actually want to check. The, yeah, I actually want to check something else. Uh, let's not let's not go too much in detail uh, because that will that will confuse people. I will actually take this guy, the second guy. Okay, so let me actually copy this part. I'm going to just copy it here. Uh, my main motive is to basically see if my results are shown for one plus sixty or not. So I'll just copy this whole section, paste it back in my code. Okay. So this guy should give me one plus 60. So I can say if, I have not spoken about if else uh, in our session so far, but I will talk about that in a while. So result, if result, okay, dot equals, okay, one plus 60, 60, then I can say the test passed, this out test passed else failed right what is if else I will talk about that later on but for now just understand that I'm evaluating a condition and I'm saying that if the condition meets then it is a pass or the fail okay sorry so to run this yeah go on uh, one plus space 60. Oh, okay, that's fine. It will fail. That's okay. Yeah, it failed. 
So I'll just say space 60. Let's run it again. Test passed. You see that? A very simple test case I created. So this is how your test case, I mean, I'm, I'm creating a basic of basic test case. Uh, 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 very complex scenarios will, will be shown to you later on. Um, that will turn turn your head uh, you know, upside down uh, when we write our test case. But I'm just trying to give you a very simple understanding of how a test case looks like, right? So that's that's pretty much about that I wanted to show.